We are continuing to look at the 23rd Psalm, a psalm that I mentioned weeks ago. It's perhaps one of the most well-known passages of Scripture that David is speaking uh, from the perspective of sheep. And so we continue today in our study. Let's hear God's Word. I believe this is from the uh, Amplified. Is that right, little Sam? I think it's yes. the Amplified yes. version, which is one of my favorite. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod to protect, your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Please pray with me. Lord, I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations, the decisions, the responses of our hearts this day may be acceptable in thy sight. For you, O Lord, art our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We move on to the passage in the verse that states that the Good Shepherd guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What is David talking about as a shepherd, as he flocks, takes care of his flocks? Well, it's interesting that sheep are creatures of habit, like many animals. They are creatures of habit. And without receiving correction, they will do the same thing over and over and over again. Philip Keller points out that in his ministry and as his vocation as a shepherd, that there are times the same trails that the sheep go over, the same pasture. And, not to be a little too graphic, but they pollute the area that they go. And over and over and over again, it can cause a big problem. And so sheep need to be led into new pastures, to green pastures. Philip Keller talks about having a neighbor that had a field that was poorly managed, not taken care of, that turned into a desolate Wasteland. And I think about the people today out there, and sometimes those of us in here, where if we are not careful, we're not following the shepherd, that our lives, our spiritual lives, can be desolate wastelands. One of the myths that Philip Keller continually uh, shares is the fact that that many people believe that sheep pretty much take care of themselves, that there's not much work involved. And I hope that in this series of messages about the shepherd, you see that that's not true. It's not true of a, a real shepherd. You know, we have this vision today of a, a shepherd out in the field, sitting down, you know, with, with your tablet out, your eye, you know, connected to the internet, just kind of enjoying and basking in the sunlight. But a shepherd has a lot of work to do. Jesus, our good shepherd, right, in our lives, goes before us. Shepherds have to often move their flocks for the sake of the sheep and the lamb. Sheep will continue, continue to eat the grass right down to the roots and even the roots, destroying eventually the grass that will feed them in the future. If you know anything about sheep, you know that they are stubborn, that they are lazy, 
And God's word uses the phrase stiff-necked or stubborn. Well, guess what? We're like sheep. God's word says we're like sheep. I'm going to show you that verse in a moment. But at times in our lives, we can be lazy. And not really follow the shepherd. Not really following him as he leads us into good paths. We prefer sometimes to stay in the wasteland. We prefer to be off on our own. The prophet Isaiah says in the message translation, we're all like sheep who have wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own thing and gone our own way, and God has piled all our sins, everything we've done wrong, on him. Now think about it this week when you watch the news. Think about all the sheep going their own way, doing their own thing. God's word says, all we like sheep, we've gone astray. And sometimes when people talk about not being happy in the church, sometimes people can cause conflict and issues in churches. And in situations like that, I often have said, come and cheat. Well, you're free to go off and start your own church, and you can be in it, but that wouldn't be perfect either, because you're in it. All we like sheep have gone astray. There is a way, Proverbs says, there is a way that appears to be right, but the, in the end it leads to death. Thank goodness that the good shepherd leads us, if we are willing to follow. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. One of the biggest myths about shepherds and sheep is that sheep will go along the gateway looking for the opening into the sheep pen. And guess what? There's only one opening. Can you imagine how confusing it would be for the shepherd to have multiple entrances, not knowing where sheep are coming and going? And so Jesus uses this concept in John 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, if that sounds exclusive to you, let me assure you, it is exclusive. There are not multiple ways into the sheepfold. It's not a matter of being obedient and being good or being better than someone else. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And people enter by me. Jesus also said, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Well, see, and I don't know if that's been one of our memory verses, but it should be and maybe will be. Because it's a great verse in John 10.10. 10. Satan comes into your life to steal your joy, to steal your peace, to kill your faith, and to destroy you spiritually if he can. But Jesus said, I've come, the good shepherd comes, that you may have life and have it to the full. I mentioned how out on the ranch, Philip Keller would talk about people who would come and steal and kill his sheep. And how the shepherd would sleep with one eye open, the real shepherd with one eye open, and with a rifle nearby to protect his sheep. That's what Jesus does for us. Jesus protects us. And I'm going to be unconvinced that one day when we go to heaven, we, we will, God will show us the areas in our lives where we were in real danger of going off the cliff. One more step, and the Good Shepherd helps us. So the problem is, because sheep are stubborn and lazy, that sheep do not always want to be led in paths of green pastures. And because we are like sheep, we don't always like to be led into paths of righteousness. I mean, we want to do things our way because we think we know better. 
It's so hard to do things and to be righteous about it. It's much easier to respond with hate, with hate, violence with violence, bad words and bad deeds or bad deeds and bad words. You and I know the hostility in these recent years out in the world in terms of righteousness. We see it in food stores. It's not a uh, week that goes by that you don't see a Wendy's or a McDonald's or a Burger King, right? Somebody just losing it because they didn't get enough ketchup on their burger. We see it as we drive around and go. We see it in, in supermarkets. Uh, back when um, back when COVID started, I was in Walmart one day and everybody was looking for the hand sanitizer and all that stuff. And they had a few bottles left when I asked somebody in the grocery department, they said, oh, it's over, you know, by the pharmacy. Well, by the time I got over to the pharmacy department, there was a little bit of a ruckus, and I asked one of the workers what was going on. And she said, well, there was a fight over the last bottle of hand sanitizer. So we see this hostility more and more in the world. We see it in the workplace. We see it at the supermarket. We see it in our homes with families being destroyed. Because the thief comes, Satan comes, to kill and to steal and to destroy. So true or false, you don't have to speak openly or raise your hand, but true or false, you can be a sheep and not follow the shepherd. Isn't that true? Yeah. So Keller talks about sheep that we're constantly wandering away. You can be a Christian and not follow the shepherd. And that's why a lot of Christians in this day and age, because they're not following the shepherd, they don't have that peace, they don't have that joy, they don't have that sense of serenity and calmness in their lives in the midst of the storm. And you know, the answer is very simple. I can tell you what the answer is. I can't make you do it. The answer is following the shepherd. Finally, this phrase this morning, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I love that phrase. And somebody has once pointed out and has asked this question. Has a shadow, has a shadow ever hurt you? Now, children are sometimes afraid of the shadow, right? And uh, particularly as I walk in my neighborhood during the summer days, uh, I kind of enjoy walking during the time of day where as I'm walking, my shadow is like 15 feet long. You know, it's like I'm a big person, but I'm not. The journey of the sheep and the shepherd. So the shepherd will take his flock up to the mountaintops to feed. And we all enjoy being up there, don't we? We all enjoy the mountaintop. But you know, sometimes the shepherd leads the sheep into the valley. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Shepherds always went ahead to scout and to prepare the way for the flock. The shepherd doesn't allow the sheep to just go, go find your way, go find green pastures. The shepherd goes and then leaves ahead and you see how much work there is. Jesus goes before us. The shepherd goes forward. He removes poisonous plants. He looks for area where there may be dangerously high waters and streams. He looks for places where there may be rock slides where rocks may come and hurt his sheep. The shepherd does that because he cares for the sheep, and Jesus does that in our lives. Every mountain has valleys, and there is no quick or easy solution to becoming spiritually mature. There are no quick courses, no online quick courses. As you talk one day with Abraham and with Noah, and Elijah, and John the Baptist. We don't like 
the valleys. But notice it says, though I walk through the valley. We, we don't stop there in the valley. And there, there really there is a, a danger in stopping in that valley. And when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We don't stop there, we don't die there, but we walk. So the valley of death is the door to eternity, according to the scriptures. As our lives are transformed from this life into the next, it is like a door. So there's a story told of a sick man who was in his doctor's office visit, and he was preparing to leave the examination room, and he said, Doctor, he said, I'm afraid to die. Can you tell me what's on the other side? And the doctor said, yeah, I don't know. The man replied, you don't know? You're a Christian man. Do you know what is on the other side? And at that moment, the doctor walked over to his door. He put up his hand on the door handle. And on the other side came a sound of scratching and whining as he opened the door. And as he did that, a dog sprang into the room and leaped on him with the eager show of gladness. And turning to the patient, the doctor said, did you notice my dog? He's never been in this room before. He didn't know what was inside. He knew nothing but that his master was here. And then when the door opened, he came in without fear. He says, I know a little of what is on the other side of death, but I do know one thing. My master is there. And that is enough for me. In the valleys, we find refreshing waters and Christ's presence, as I wrap up. It is in the valleys that there are streams of water. In the valleys, we find the richest feet. When we go through the most difficult times in our lives, those are the times when we grow the most. That's the times when our faith is on God. Not that we don't always, <coughs> excuse me, not that we don't always pray, but I know about you, know, I, I pray more when I'm in the valley. And God is able to have his way with us. And God is able to lead us out of the valley up into the mountains. And you know what? Only those that have been in the valley can empathize, console, and comfort others going through their valley. Now, I, I can't tell you what's in Switzerland. I've never been to Switzerland other than things that I've read. And so when the Christian walk, when you and I go through these valleys, God uses that. I love Paul in first. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in our sorrows, so that we may be of comfort to others, also going through sorrow. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. Beautiful hymn. It is in the cleft of the rock there he shelters us from storms. Finally, I conclude with this. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this light, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all this all-surpassing <clears throat> power is from God and not from us. And then I like this passage. Have you ever felt this way? Paul did. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body, for we who are alive, are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, 
Death is at work in us. But life is at work in you. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for these words today. Lord, we confess we plead guilty. We are like sheep. We don't like to be told where to go, what to do, how to do it. But Lord, you give us the wisdom of your word. You give us the wisdom of your spirit. Lord, help us to truly listen to that voice. In Christ we pray. Amen.